Welcome to Good Money Guide TV. Today we're talking to Duncan Anderson, the UK CEO of Tickmill. We're going to discuss what Tickmill does, what they do differently compared to all the other brokers in the space. And we're going to find out a little bit more about Duncan, uh, including what a typical day looks like for a CEO, the best and worst things about running Tickmill. Plus, he's going to give us some tips and a book recommendation for traders. So, Duncan, thank you very much for, thank you very much for joining us. A pleasure to be here. Just tell us a little bit about Tickmill and how it differs from all the other brokers out there. Uh, Tickmill's a, a, a global broker. Um, we uh, are operating in uh, five different uh, uh, jurisdictions in terms of being regulated. Um, but we have a, a global footprint. Uh, historically, our, our business has uh, been uh, sort of Asia orientated, but it's uh, progressively got sort of global in nature. But I think uh, if you're looking at, uh, at the way in which we sort of differ from other, other brokers, you, I think there are about five or six key elements that, that we focus on. One is the, uh, the actual instruments that we trade. So we, we have to cater to a, a global audience. So we've got a wide selection of, of instruments. Uh, we, we look at uh, our, our I, I guess, our product offering and and really focus on the actual platforms that we're uh, we are selling and one of the sort of great joys that we have is is uh, the way in which we can plug in over 30 different platforms to suit any sort of client that might want to trade with us we are really focused on pricing and that's one of our sort of key elements that uh, we ensure that we've got really solid, stable, uh, robust environments that allow us to push pricing through these pipes that gives clients, you know, extra, I guess, extra uh, support in terms of knowing exactly how pricing is going to come through to them and then them through back to our liquidity providers. We are really keen to manage our sort of regulatory footprint as well. So, as I said, we're regulated in five different jurisdictions, but we try to gold plate a lot of that through our existing relationships with uh, with the uh, our regulator in London, um, and that again gives support to our um, our, our clients and. Uh, it's you know it adds this sort of extra sort of safety element that I think clients are looking for, and uh, finally I think it's sort of customer service and education uh, that goes sort of hand in hand. But if you offer really quality customer support environment, you're always going to ensure that clients are uh, uh, are going to be far more receptive to you. Okay. Should we just dig into those a little bit more? So the, f yeah. the, the first two were basically what you can trade and how and how you can trade it. Because people either have their own trading platform or they outsource third party platforms, MT4 obviously being one of the most one of the most popular ones. So the instruments you can trade, how does that differ from, say, the, the IGs and the, the CMCs of this world? And, and, and we'll go into a little bit about the range of platforms. I think, um, from, a, from a CFD perspective, I mean, we, we, we are a, a, a multi-asset uh, type broker um, and we're constantly expanding the, sort of the range of products that we can, we can offer clients. But if you're looking specifically at CFDs, it ranges from uh, you know, your, your FX, commodities, bonds. But we also have futures and options as well. And you combine those two elements together uh, it allows us to pitch uh, multiple platforms to our clients and for them obviously to, to then sort of trade between CFDs and between futures and options on top of that. So uh, the, some of the sort of str strategic decisions they make when they're coming to trade actually uh, can multiply exponentially. And that's really exciting. Okay. And what's your view on CFDs versus futures and options? We, we were chatting earlier when we had a coffee about you know, how futures used to be a large contract and inaccessible to, to smaller traders. And that's where CFDs came in and, and filled the gap. But now <coughs> exchanges like the CME, as you said, are, are introducing these micro contracts, which make it more accessible for people to trade. Do you think CFDs have a future or do you think there'll always be a, 
uh, space in the market for both. I, I, I think CFDs are, you know, they're one of the, the great sort of inventions of of yeah. of, of our time. Uh, if you are a, <clears throat> uh, you have a stockbroking account, you've got one option: it's to buy and hold or sell. With CFDs, you can manage obviously the risk behind that, and you can manage it to to a, you know to a minimal amount, uh, yeah. as we say. But you add in futures and then options. And the way in which exchanges now are microizing the, uh, the, the these products, they are, they offer a different uh, different perspective in, in their own right. So you are getting price discovery from an actual exchange as opposed from a from a sort of a, another entity. Yeah. And that I think you know both products will suit uh, different types of clients. And indeed, what we're seeing, you know, traders actually utilizing both the CFDs and futures at the same time. I was going to ask actually if one's more popular than the other on the plat platform or, or is it regional? It, well, I mean, I, I mean, futures started in the States, they, yeah. they continue in the States, but now you're seeing, you know, other, other sort of geographic regions, uh, Asia, especially Europe to a certain extent, uh, all applying for for uh, you know, I guess the more sort of a retail trader because okay. because they can, okay. and they see massive growth in that market as well. Okay. And, and let's just talk about um, trading platforms and the type of customers you have. So obviously you've got MT4, CQG as well, and you set up to thirty trading platforms. You can you can bolt in. Do you, do you have a favourite? Is there a, a most? We've popular? got a MT4, mm -hmm. MT5, uh, and obviously the, sort of the the the, the uh, mobile sort of apps that sort of go along with that. But if, if you can get them. <laughs> if you, yes, yes. I mean, only if you're an Android player, I guess, nowadays. <laughs> but you, uh, CQG allows us to plug in all these other different platforms like TradingView, like Multicharts, Sierra Charts. So if you are uh, a trader with a specific sort of feel for one platform, and, and people tend to be sticky in that sort of environment, yeah. it takes about 10 minutes for us to plug um, uh, a trader into, into their favorite platform via API and, um, and and off you go. And is there a theme? Do, do specific types of traders like specific types of platform? You know, do, do, do equity traders like one over another order? There, there are definitely some better platforms than other. It, it, I mean, CQG in its own right, is it's, it's a beast. Mm. Uh, uh, but you can actually break it down into fairly simple sort of blocks if you want to see pricing uh, the ladder it's there. If you want to trade off the chart, it's there. You can add, delete, lots of stuff. If you want to trade options, it's 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 heavy in terms of what you can see. And of course, the prices you see are are real prices, real exchange-driven prices. So that's uh, okay. it's um, it's it, yeah, it's 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 fascinating, in fact. And, and before we move on to just a little bit bit about yourself and 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 and, and running Tickmo, you, you mentioned education as well. How much of a focus does Tickmill put on educating their customers? What sort of education do you offer traders who are just getting started and research and analysis for, for more advanced traders? We like to, we, I think it's definitely something that we, 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 we want to expand on because uh, we have a, uh, a hub that allows people to access a lot of, uh, uh, a, a lot of material. Uh, but for sure, there's, I think there's, there's massive opportunity for creating environments where you can actually uh, get credentials mm -hmm. of, some uh, of some description. Uh, so you've done a small course, you know, five, 10 minutes, maybe, maybe even longer. Uh, and that gives you a credential to say, you know, I've done this, I've traded this, I'm, I'm competent. Therefore, it sort of adds to your, I guess, your sort of trading history uh, in terms of how we look at a trader and how we will interact with a trader uh, going forward. And of course, we push that out to uh, uh, more experienced traders and give them this uh, added value. If they are, you know, a, uh, uh, a, an individual that has, uh, uh, likes Python and is creating a strategy and wondering how they can connect in some shape or form and having difficulties, then we can sort of 
help them. So you can help with that implementation yeah. of, of trading strategies. Actually, just, just before we want, do you see lots of people on MT4 just you know, click and trading, or do a lot of people run algos and strategies through the, it? The, 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 the clients we have uh, vary from the, mm. the uh, I mean, dare I say, the retail, uh, self-directed, mm. point and click, through to, you know, hardcore, high frequency traders, you know, acting under a, you know, a, a, a hedge fund type umbrella. Okay. And, and we can cater for that sort of, uh, uh, flow. Okay. And do you have much interaction with the customers? I mean, what does a typical day look like for a for a CEO of a UK brokerage now? Is it uh, is it all lunches and uh, client schmoozing, or are those <laughs> are those days gone? I think they they went some time. <laughs> but uh, I mean, it, I, every day is is a, is a challenge. Yeah. It's uh, uh, but I mean, challenges is is is, uh, uh, is good in its own right. We we see now a lot of you know uh, if one's looking out to 2023 2024 there are some big elements that we're going to have to sort of deal with you know one is consumer duty uh and the other one is uh is the uh, emir refit so both involve quite a lot of work but they need to be done um so we have to interact with uh, uh the analysts with the project managers, with the product team, uh, and the dev team. And that's the great joy of, of having quite a sort of diverse uh, uh, team around you that you can pull on and, 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 and then shape a solution that you can ultimately sort of execute okay. at the end of the day. So it's, it, it, it's fascinating work, but it, it's, it, it's certainly time intensive and it's, um, it's, not, it's not a free lunch, put it like that. Yeah. There are no free lunches anymore, and uh, so there's some of there's some of the challenges. But what, what's part of the, the what's the best part about running or, or working at, at, at Tick Mill? Any any particular notes? I think it's when if if one looks at the, 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 these these challenges that we're going through, it's actually finding some sort of solution to it and actually seeing it being rolled out at the end of the day. Um, but equally, it's 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 finding also traders that. You know, for, I guess from a trading standpoint, it's it's, it's um, hearing from them, uh, and you know they have an issue, they have a problem, they 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 they've they've got a they've got a uh, uh, an algo, they really can't seem to get it to work. Maybe we have a quant team also that can help these individuals um, and companies. You know, just a little tweak here, tweak there. It's 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 fascinating when that when that happens, and of course, you know, if a trader's success is our success. So, so people can still phone you up and and ask, and ask for help. You're not just you're not just online only. Not sure. We don't clearly don't give advice in terms of, course, of, yeah. uh, sort of yeah. trading, but uh, for sure, it's uh, um, uh, we had, we had a, one chap in the other day. He's relatively young. He's uh, uh, he. I like said he's a, a Python a specialist. Um, he. He was with a competitor. He came over to us. Um, we did a little bit of work for him in order to uh, push trade flow into his MT5 environment, and uh, uh, and and it's working. Okay. So that that's that's really satisfying. So you've been in this business for for quite a while now, and over that time, you must have seen traders that have done well and those that have done not quite so well. Do you have any tips for traders? Do you, is, is there anything that you've consistently seen traders do well or, or things that you've seen traders consistently do that they really shouldn't do? You know, what would you say to traders that, that would make them a better trader? It, 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 it's probably easier to sort of spot traders that haven't done so yeah. well. Um, I, the first thing I would say is it, it, you've got to know and understand what, why you're getting into the, into the position you want to get into. Uh, in terms of, do you want to become a trader? Uh, do you want to become a, uh, a, a an armchair trader? Or do you want to do it full time? You you have to make various major decisions, and once once you've made that decision, I think everything else becomes easier. You 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 then create a strategy around the decision you've actually made about how you want to strategically get involved in in trading. Uh, once you've made that or created that strategy, you then test it uh, to the nth degree yeah test 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 and um, 
from test, then it's delivery. But what you also really need to bear in mind is that you have a limited amount of capital. And the longer you stay in the game, the more successful you're likely to be. Okay. Uh, and don't act like you're a god on the first day when you've, uh, when you've made your first win, because it, it undoubtedly sort of ends up coming to back, back to bite you, I think. Okay. And what about a book recommendation? Anything you think, any, any books you think that, you know, if you're a trader, albeit a high frequency trader, or just someone who likes to bet on an event, what, is, there, is there a book out there that you think, do you know what, if you read this, you'll have a better understanding of how the markets and how trading works. I've, I've, I always like reading Market Wizards. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a safe, it's a safe book to read, but it, it, it's fascinating because, um, uh, the, you know, it is a bunch of interviews uh, with a common theme, though, that while, while, while these great traders, uh, successful traders, have, have, have achieved so much, uh, they give different answers uh, to the questions that are posed to them, but, uh, but there are the common thread is, is that they all have some sort of method methodology and they also have the right mental capacity to, to win out in the end. Okay. And I think with those two elements, anyone could be a market wizard. Okay, great. Well, I look forward to hearing more from you in the, more from you in the future and um, we'll follow Ticknell's progress uh, in the UK and around, uh, around the world. Thank you for watching.